So, the scattering of uh, neutron and proton and the scattering experimental geometry I had told scattering cross section I have told scattering cross section which has units of area that contains the information about the interaction between those particles uh, which are interacting. And uh, in uh, central force scattering you generally describe things in terms of uh, uh, phase shifts in the partial waves and these, these phase shifts are related to the scattering cross sections. So, scattering cross sections are measured experimentally and then from the model that you develop theory that you develop you uh, also calculate it and test whether your theory is correct or not or it needs modification. So, we were uh, looking at uh, the same potential that produced right kind of binding energy of deuteron that is 36 MeV deep square well potential 2.1 femtometer wide. So, this potential if we think that this is the interaction potential what kind of scattering cross section it should give. So, we were uh, uh, writing the equations to Schrodinger equations for that potential we have two regions region 1 and region 2 and energy is somewhere here this is uh, this V is here and R here this is R naught this point is R naught and then uh, this is V equal to 0 and this is V is equal to minus V naught and from there we wrote our equations and we found that in the first part the uh, U, U function should be of this kind A sin capital K R where capital K was square root of 2 m v naught plus e over h cross square and the second region it was of the type some c prime and then sin k r plus delta where this is small k was square root of 2 m e over h cross square. So, both are uh, oscillating functions right because in region 1 as well as region 2 the energy is, is more than this uh, potential. So, you have in classical language you have positive kinetic energy here as well as positive kinetic energy here. So, then uh, the wave function is sin cosine type oscillating functions. If the energy is less than the uh, potential energy that means classically kinetic energy there will become negative then you have that exponentially decaying function e to the power minus gamma r or so. Now, this delta is the, this delta same as the phase shift we were talking of because this we had written just uh, two constants in this region the r equal to 0 is not contained. So, you can have both sin and cosine terms and uh, that uh, c sin k r plus d cos k r we just wrote it like this. So, these are two constants two arbitrary constant is this delta same as the phase shift. So, how did we define that phase shift if you remember if there is no potential then we wrote the wave function and the wave function which was just e to the power i k z was summation over what was that l 0 to infinity i l 2 l plus 1 sin k r minus l pi by 2 divided by k r and p l cos theta. And when the potential was there in presence of potential right there we introduce that phase shift so in the sign term you have an extra delta plus delta l
and this is for large r, this is for large r, this is for large r. So, at large values of r, you compare the wave function that would originate if there is no potential and when there is potential and then you then you find that okay, in each of these sign terms you have this delta l coming in. In our case, we are only dealing with l equal to 0 low energy n p scattering. So, that only l equal to 0 is effective. So, one phase shift is here. So, here if I see if there is no potential if there is no potential this potential is not there then you do not have region 1 and region 2 you have only one region right there is no boundary it is all v equal to 0 right from beginning to end it is v equal to 0. So, we in that case and this is energy in that case the this function u will be some constant times sin of which are capital K r or small k r small k r. In fact, it, it becomes the same whether you call it capital K r or small k r. If there is no potential v naught is 0 uh, this this line is flat starting from 0. So, there is no v naught. Okay, and therefore, this uh, capital K will be same as this small k, right. But I am using small k simple because I am interested at large r and at large r I have used small k here. If there is no potential, then u is a sin k r. Okay. The radial part is of course, u r divided by r. So, that divided by r term will come, right. This divided by this is wave function and wave function phi as a function of r when you write it is u divided by r. So, this divided by r is also uh, coming when you write the wave, wave function this is u function only and of course, p l cos theta is 1 because l is equal to 0 and, and all those things. So, so if there is no potential this is a sin k r and this is uh, valid for all r this is valid for all r therefore, also valid for right. Whereas, once you put the potential for large r this u 2 is effective not u 1 u 1 is for r less than r naught. So, for large values of r I have to look at this the wave function becomes some constant times sin k r plus delta. So, you can see this delta is same as that delta uh, compare the situation when there is no potential and when there is a potential when there is no potential and where is when there is a potential and then look at this sign term here that extra thing is the phase shift and that exactly is the case here hmm. for large r when there is no potential it is this and when there is a potential it is this and yes there is an extra delta there. So, this de extra delta is the phase shift. So, if we can calculate this delta we can get the cross section using the equation between delta L and cross section. So, that is it. So, to get that uh, delta you match the the wave functions and the slopes. So, u 1 at r naught should be equal to u 2 at r naught wave function has to be continuous everywhere and therefore, a sin capital K r naught should be equal to c prime sin small k r naught plus delta and slopes are continuous d u d r is continuous. So, a capital K cos capital K r naught should be equal to c prime cos uh, okay, this k will come out. So, small k here then cos k r naught plus delta and when you divide you get capital K cot capital K r naught is equal to small k 
spot small k r not plus delta. Now, in this equation what is the unknown quantity and what are the known quantities? Look at capital K, capital K is here mass reduced mass of proton neutron system known h cross the square known v naught known 36 mev e known the energy I, is, I am sending these particles. So, that is under our control the particles are that beam is being sent. So, you have to look at that which kinetic energy uh, you have given. So, from there you get this E all right. So, this capital K is known R naught 2.1 femtometer small k once again 2 m e h cross the square. So, known R naught known. So, this is a single unknown delta here solve this equation to get delta right. Solve this to get delta and once you get delta from that get cross section sigma okay at 1 by k square remember that for l is equal to 0 it was simple 4 pi over k square sin square delta naught if only l equal to 0 is contributing you do not have to do summation over different l then the, the equation is very simple 4 pi by k square sin square delta naught. So, once you get uh, delta from this equation which is same as delta naught phase shift so you get sigma. Similarly, if you have uh, any given potential attractive potential here you can make uh, proper calculations and get that. Uh, cross section. For this particular potential when you do the calculation what you find is that uh, the sigma calculated using this potential remember it depends you change the potential sigma will be different ok. Using this potential which gives me the right kind of binding energy for deuteron using this potential this is this turns out to be around 5 barns right 5 around 5 barns even if you change this potential because uh, deuteron binding energy can also be gotten to not this is not the unique potential which will give you that binding energy this potential gives that binding energy, but then you can always play with width and the depth and the shape also. Mm, I have taken square well shape you can take some other shape attractive potential. So, you can uh, play with it. So, you can change the potential and still get that minus 2.225 MeV, but uh, the value of sigma will not change much it will be somewhere around 5 bond 4 bond 2 bond 3 bond depending on what potential you are taking. Now, I will show you the experimental results ok it is uh, from that uh, book of Kenneth Crane and look at your screens and I will show you this y axis here is sigma this y axis is sigma in Barnes and this point is 10 this point if you can read this on the screen and this point here is 20 this is written 20 here this is written 20 here. So, this is 20 barn this is 10 barn and this is 0 and this is uh, neutron kinetic energy this side is kinetic energy in electron volts this is 10 to the power 6 this point is 10 to the power 6. So, 1 MeV 1 MeV here this is 10 to the power 3. So, 1 keV he here ok this is 100 EV. So, these are the scales and then you can see the points are here low energies look at low energy we are interested in low energies. So, that only delta this uh, L equal to 0 is operative. So, at low energies the experimentally measured value is around 20 barn ok. This is the data I have taken it from this book introductory nuclear physics Kenneth K. S. Crane and they have taken this data from these uh, papers reviews of modern physics 22 
1950 and additional results physical review C 1970. So, let us discuss why the experimental value is so different from the calculated values. What is your guess? Why it is so different? We know that uh, this potential is not uh, accurate, you, you have uh, other contributions tensor potential, tensor part of the potential all those things are there, but still uh, it is not that bad, this potential is not that bad. Uh, the variations could be say 10 percent, 20 percent, 50 percent, but the here it is 400 percent. So, what gross thing we are missing? We are missing something uh, very big in our calculations or in our treatment. And that gross thing is that uh, this potential that we have uh, taken from deuteron bound state studies and deuteron bound state corresponds to capital S equal to 1. Right. In deuteron bound state capital S is always 1 is not 0. Whereas, in our scattering geometry where uh, it is not bound right the two particles are coming close and then here they are not bound to each other they are getting scattered. So, the bound state is not formed scattering state is formed where they are scattering from each other. So, if uh, that bound state is not formed then depending on with what spin orientation it is coming one uh, neutron is coming with this spin orientation another will come with this spin orientation and so on you are sending a beam of neutrons. So, different neutrons are having different orientations then in this target you have protons these protons will also have you do not have just one proton uh, in this this target you have protons on which this neutron beam is coming. So, these protons will also have uh, different spin orientations. So, in that beam some neutron is going uh, close to this proton, some other neutron is going close to this proto proton and so on. So, you have different kinds of uh, spin orientations and therefore, when the spins couple they can couple to s equal to 0 right. It is only in the bound state that uh, we confirm that yes deuteron capital S has to be 1 because the angular measured angular momentum is capital equal to capital I equal to 1 and all those things parity positive from there. But in this scattering geometry where the neutrons protons are interacting through these nuclear forces, but not producing bound state. Then depending on the initial spin orientations of the two particles they can combine to s equal to 1 they can combine to s equal to 0. And that the statistical probability factor will be operative capital S equal to 1 has 3 states remember whereas, capital S equal to 0 has only one state. Hmm? So, capital S is equal to 1 has 3 states uh, this m s equal to 0 and plus minus 1. So, spin up spin up then uh, you have 1 by square root of 2 up down plus down up and then down down you have three possible orientations possible or three possible combinations are there. Whereas, if s is equal to 0 you have only one possible combination this is 0 and that is 1 by root 2 up down minus down up. So, if everything is random then uh, 75 percent times you will end up with capital S equal to 1 and 25 percent times you will end up with capital S equal, S equal to 0. So, our calculation gives us cross section from only those events in which capital S equal to 1 was formed right and the events in which capital S equal to 0 was formed that is not covered here. 
Mm. So, the observed cross section that I observe in experiment that is taking contribution from both s equal to 0 and s equal to 1 that should be the sigma observed should be 3 is to 1. So, 3 by 4 times uh, sigma which uh, should come from capital S equal to 1 and 1 fourth. So, it becomes 75 percent 25 percent sigma S is equal to 0. Okay. Now, I can estimate how much is sigma S equal to 0. The sigma observed is 20 bonds and sigma for S is equal to 1, let us believe this 10, 20 percent this side, that side, what is uh, is of this type. So, 5 bar and plus 1 by 4 sigma S equal to 0. So, how much is sigma s equal to 0 from this? Sixty five barns, very, very different. <laughs> With capital S equal to 1, you are getting something like 5 barns. With capital S is equal to 0, uh, 65 barns. So, the nuclear forces are highly spin dependent. Hmm, this is scattering of these particles neutron proton is very different if it is governed by that s equal to 0 potential than when it is governed by s equal to 1 potential. So, s equal to 1 potential is different and s equal to 0 potential is different and widely different. So, that the cross sections are uh, much different. Right. Okay, so, now let me uh, do something else. Uh, th this was for low energy scattering. When you go for little bit higher energy scattering, you see some uh, different results. Let me show you another figure from Crane's book and then we will discuss that. Okay, look at your screens. Now, this diagram that you are seeing here the experiments are done at different energies or high and higher energies few hundred MeVs up to few hundred MeVs a scattering experiment and the phase shifts are plotted here. So, on the y axis you have phase shift delta and uh, on the x axis you have energy in MeVs and this point is 100 MeV this point is 100 MeV, this point is 200, this point is 300, this point is 400 and this point is 500 MeV. Okay. So, this is the scale, if you are not able to see it clearly, uh, this is the scale. Now, phase shift, there are uh, three diagrams given, one is this. one is this and this is for singlet S wave, it is called singlet S wave that means capital S is equal to 0 and the other one here, other one here is triplet S wave. So, S is equal to 1 and S wave means L equal to 0. And this one that you are seeing here, this is P wave that means L is equal to 1. So, at uh, low energies that L is L equal to 1 contribution is negligible here. Remember the scale this is 100 mega electron volt. So, the scale is uh, uh, of that kind. So, somewhere here if you look which will be say close to less than 1 MeV or so, uh, less than 1 MeV that L equal to 1 contribution is negligible, you are only getting contribution from L equal to 0, S equal to 0 and S equal to 1. So, let us say here it is S is equal to 0 and here it is S is equal to 1. 
at this energy. But as you increase the energy, say 100 MeV, then P wave has started giving you contribution. Now this this much is coming from P wave L equal to one. So L equal to one has started coming in, and that is increasing. Okay, that is increasing uh, as you increase the energy. More and more contribution is coming from there. The important point that I want to focus attention is that this delta is positive at low energies and as you increase energy around 300 MeV here this is 300 MeV around this 300 MeV somewhere here delta changes sign delta becomes negative. So, energy less than this 300 MeV delta is positive and energy greater than 300 MeV delta is negative. This is delta 0 L equal to 0 I am talking not L equal to 1. So, L equal to 0 so delta 0 that changes its sign at around 300 MeV right. Okay. So, let us uh, discuss that. First, how this they come out separately how much is uh, delta 1 and how much is delta 0, because when you do the experiment uh, the neutrons are coming and the neutrons are scattered. So, how do you know whether it is L equal to 0 neutron or L equal to 1 neutron, right? because neutrons are coming at that angle your detector is detecting. So, how that angular momentum separation is done? So, angular momentum separation is done from angular distribution of the particles. You, you saw when you think of L equal to 0 scattering, then uh, there was no theta dependence in the wave function. So, it is isotropic, but if you bring L equal to 1, you will have that y 1 uh, spherical harmonics, which have a particular kind of theta distribution. If it is L equal to 2, uh, the, your theta dependence will be different 3 cos square theta minus 1 and so on. So, once you have uh, this data number of neutrons scattered at different angles, you can separate them out this much is isotropic part and this is like cos theta variation and this is like 3 cos square minus 1 variation. So, from that uh, angular distribution of the particles, they can separate it out. Now, what is the significance that this delta 0 changes its sign? So, let us uh, look at uh, that diagram once again. This potential look at this potential. So, here u 1 was some sin capital K r where capital K was square root of 2 m v naught plus e over h cross square and u 2 was a sin small k r plus delta, where k was 2 m e over h cross square. So, if I plot the sin function, just this sin function okay, u, uh, this constant may be different c prime we wrote. Now, uh, suppose here you have R naught. Now, if uh, the potential was not there, then uh, you will have just sin of k r. So, let us say this is sin of k r. This is sin of k r. Now, what happens? in this region r less than r naught what happens now the way this uh, it is again sine function but this k is different capital k the small k this is all small k i had plotted now it becomes capital k here and capital k is greater than small k right capital k is greater than small k and therefore that uh, periodicity in this sine function this this period this one period correct. Yes, 
So, this is uh, if capital K is larger that periodicity becomes smaller because this k into r has to change by 2 pi to complete one period. So, r will change 2 pi divided by capital K right then one period. So, 2 pi angle will change by 2 pi. So, angle will change by 2 pi that means r will change by 2 pi divided by k. So, if k is large your period is shrinking. So, this part this part of the this uh, sine function should shrink right uh, because of this greater k. So, it is shrinking that means uh, if this wave function is going like this here then uh, it should be drawn to this side and possibly it is like this at r equal to 0 it is r equal to 0, but the maximum which was occurring here now it is perhaps occurring somewhere here or or may be here. Let us say from here it was occurring and now it is occurring somewhere here and it is turning. Here it is turning at this point when it is small k, when it is capital K it has to shrink that periodicity has to shrink therefore, it has turned here. So, it is like this outside it is the same k. So, outside this periodicity is not going to change the separation between this 0 and this 0 all this shape is not going to shrink, but this whole shape has to shift because it is continuous at r naught this wave function and this wave function it has to match it has to be continuous its slope should be continuous. So, this part will be drawn in this is shrinking, but this is shifting towards left to make that matching right. So, now this uh, function this whole thing will shrink and you will you will perhaps match this portion. So, this has to shift this way uh, so that it is now it has to go this way and this will shift here. So, uh, all right. So, it will cross somewhere and then if it is crossing the axis here it will cross the axis here and so on so on right. So, this uh, solid line solid curve that I had drawn earlier outside although the time period is not changing not time period r period say the periodicity in, in in along this r axis that is not changing, but the whole thing has to come left. So, that it can be matched here the value of u in region 1 and value of u in region 2 should be equal at r equal to 0 r naught at r equal to r naught they have to match slope should also be matched and therefore, this is drawn in right. So, let me call this point r 1 and this point r 2. This I had drawn initially sin k r and this yellow one is sin k r plus delta. Now, after that potential is applied the second port second in second region u is sin of k r plus delta. So, that k remains the same, but because of this delta the whole thing is shifting right. So, when it becomes 0 it was 0 here originally it was 0 here and now it has become 0 here this will be 0 when that small k into r 2 is pi right this white curve this whole white curve is a sin curve sin of k r. So, this will become 0 when k r is pi. So, k into r 2 is pi and now look at this yellow curve the yellow curve with sin k r plus delta of course, it will shift somewhere here. So, now this will be 0 when this k r plus delta is pi sin of pi is 0. So, if this is becoming 0 here at r 1 then sin of k r 1 
plus delta this is becoming 0. So, this should be equal to pi. Hmm. And therefore, we subtract. So, k r 1 plus delta and minus k r 2 is 0 and therefore, delta is k r 2 minus r 1. Positive or negative? R 2 minus R 1? R 2 is here, R 1 is here. So, R 2 minus R 1 is positive. So, delta is positive greater than 0. Okay. Now, suppose the potential is uh, not attractive, but repulsive. Uh, this is well square well. So, it traps the particle, it attracts the particle. Classically, if you think if uh, some particle is here and going in this direction, the kinetic energy is this much and when it reaches this r, kinetic energy is only this much. So, it is slowing down, so, it is attracting. The r is increasing mean, means particle is trying to go away and this potential, this interaction is slowing it down, its kinetic energy is decreasing. So, it is attracting, it is attractive potential. If uh, you have repulsive potential, uh, uh, I can draw it something like this is 0 here and then as you reach that range of potential, so this potential energy increases and of course, at r equal to 0, it is infinity. So, V is 0 here this is r equal to r naught and then here v is equal to uh, plus v naught. Here it was v equal to minus v naught, this was v equal to 0. For large distances we always take v equal to 0. So, for large distances v is equal to 0, but when you come into that interaction range, suppose if you have repulsive potential it will be like this. Again you can think in terms of kinetic energy suppose this is the separation and the separation is increasing. So, the particle is go to trying to go away hmm. uh, at certain instant suppose this is the separation and then the separation is increasing. So, the particle is going away from the other particle and then this much is kinetic energy this total energy I am telling. If this is total energy this is potential energy this is kinetic energy. And when it uh, reaches here, what happens? This becomes the kinetic energy. So, the kinetic energy has increased, the particle was going away and the kinetic energy has increased. So, that means, this particle is repelling that other particle. So, the force is not attractive, it is repulsive. So, if you have repulsive force, the potential can be something of this sort. Once again, we can write that time independent Schrodinger equation, we can solve and the, the you can still write it in this format. Okay. But now, u 1 will be equal to A sin capital K r you can write and that uh, is that capital K will be now how much E minus V naught. So, 2 m E minus V naught. Capital K will be square root 2 m E minus V naught divided by h cross square. It is this difference which comes in, right. So, this is E and this is V naught E minus V naught. Here again this difference energy and this potential energy. So, this is E and plus V naught, here it is E minus V naught and uh, that second part you can write as U 2 equal to some other constant sin small k r plus delta, where small k is 2 m e over h cross square. So, when you are here, it is this difference. So, this is 0 and this is E. So, 2 m E over h cross square. So, similar situation 
but now this capital K is smaller than uh, small k. So, capital K is smaller than small k and therefore, the periodicity that uh, period in this first region is larger than the period in the second region. Hmm. So, I can draw a similar diagram, I can draw a similar diagram here. Initially, you plot this, plot this, this is sign of small k r and then probably somewhere here you have this r naught and now the in the first region that period has increased. So, it is expanding this portion I have to expand right period is increasing. So, this point will go. So, this point will come somewhere here I have to expand it. So, it will be like this. So, it is this slope the slope will be here. the same slope and the same same point is here. Now, if I have to match this portion should come here, because it has to match with the value it has to match with the slope. So, if I have to match this white curve with this yellow curve, I have to shift it towards right. So, that this point comes here, then it will match with the slope and, and this thing. So, this whole thing is now shifted. So, this curve is this white curve is now shifted and uh, this point comes this point comes here this point comes here this point comes here. So, everything is shifted towards right. So, this point will go somewhere here this point will come here the maximum is here the maximum will be here. then you will be able to match the value and the slope here. So, once again do the same analysis call this point R 1 and this point R 2. So, this white curve is sin k r and the yellow curve is sin yellow curve is sin of k r plus delta after this matching is enforced the new equation is sin small k r plus delta right. So, the white one where which is sin of k r here it is becoming 0 and therefore, k into r 1 k into r 1 is pi and yellow curve here it is becoming 0 and this equation of yellow curve with sin k r plus delta. So, k into r 2 plus delta that is becoming pi. So, k r 2 minus k r 1 plus delta this is 0. So, delta is k r 1 minus r 2 and that is negative. So, sin of delta tells you whether this uh, interaction was attractive or was repulsive L equal to 0 right L equal to 0 contribution in scattering and from there you find that uh, phase shift corresponding to L equal to 0 and that phase shift if it is positive then you know that the uh, this uh, interaction was attractive and if that phase shift is negative then you know that the uh, interaction was repulsive. Now, the experiment shows the data which was there on your screen which is still there on your screen. The data experimental data show that this L equal to 0 phase shift that changes its sign somewhere around 300 mega electron volt for lower energies delta is positive higher energies delta is negative. 
Now, higher energies means the particles are getting closer to each other, right. If you are sending two particles uh, towards each other with uh, very high kinetic energy, yes, then they are uh, getting much closer yes. and if they are, if you are sending them at lower energy, yes. then they are at some distance apart. So, higher energy means the separation uh, you, you are probing uh, much lower separations, you are getting into much uh, closer distances. So, this change of sign at this energy signifies that if you go too close, if the two nucleons go too close to each other, very close to each other, the nuclear force will become repulsive. Right. Normally, we understand that nuclear force is attractive and much stronger than the coulomb force. Therefore, in a nucleus uh, these protons do not fly apart. Uh, the coulomb force is weaker and the nuclear force is stronger, but if you go very close distances for very close distances the nuclear force between the nucleons that itself will become repulsive mm, and then the calculations show that that separation is around 0 0.5 femtometers. So, if uh, you try to push nucleons closer than 0 0.5 femtometers, then uh, you will find that the nucleus nucleons will start repelling each other through nuclear forces. So, somewhere between 0 0.5 femtometer and 2 femtometer the force is attractive beyond 2 femtometers the force becomes uh, weak. Uh, so, its significance goes down and below 0 0.5 femtometer it is repulsive and that is why uh, there is some kind of a saturation density. Hmm? The, the nucleons are not uh, becoming uh, very dense at the center uh, or like that because after 0 0.5 femtometers there is repulsion. Similar thing happens in molecular bonds also. If you remember your molecular physics, your potential comes from a positive side, goes through a minimum and then becomes 0. So, somewhere it is crossing the origin. So, if the atoms are pushed too close to each other, then uh, it will give you repulsion. And, uh, beyond that uh, attraction. So, the molecule is bound. So, the nuclear force is uh, uh, has a hard core you can say. So, the potential that we generally draw should be modified. This is the attractive potential that we had drawn. It should be little bit modified. If this is r equal to 0 and this side is r and this side is potential and this is that point, let us say this is that point, point 0.5 around point 0.5 femtometers. So, before that it is all repulsive and after that it is attractive. So, it should be something like this. Assuming that uh, point 0.5 femtometer or whatever is that value, cutoff value, it just does, does not uh, go closer than that. Of course, it is not like that hard wall. Uh, so, then you will have some slope here and so on, but uh, this is one representation just like here we took a squirrel potential. Yes. Similarly, here you can take as a first approximation that uh, separation cannot go up to 0. In this figure I am allowing separation to go up to 0, but here we are saying that no, no, no separation between the two nucleons cannot be less than this point. So, it is infinite potential right here. Here we say that at r equal to 0 it will become infinite potential. Here we say that no at r equal to this value r cutoff you can call it r c. Here itself the potential has gone to infinity and no further compression. So, this is scattering data gives us the value r c where the nuclear potential changes its uh, character from attractive to repulsive. Okay. Now, the next uh, figure that I am going to show you on the screen is uh, even uh, more interesting. Now, this is 
neutron proton differential cross section there are three figures given three figures correspond to three different kinetic energies and on the x axis side it is angle which is plotted this side it is angle theta this is theta plotted. So, you can uh, see that this point here is 30 degrees okay. this point here is 30 degrees and this is 90 degrees and then 120, 150 and this is 180. So, 0 to 180 is the scale here it's angle scattering angle and this side is uh, differential cross section d sigma d omega not the total cross section not integrated over all theta phi at a particular theta what is the cross section then at a, some other theta what is the cross section. So, this is cross section as a function of theta and this top curve here is 42 MeV the kinetic energy is 42 MeV and the second one is 90 MeV and the third one is 300 MeV. So, what you see from here take any one say 90, 90 MeV the middle one. So, you see that uh, the cross section is large near theta equal to 0 or small values of theta and then the cross section decreases as you increase theta it decreases, but the again after 90 degrees it uh, starts increasing and uh, it keeps on increasing and very close to theta equal to 0 it is it has highest value and then very close to 180 degrees again it has higher highest values right. So, 0 to 90 it is decreasing and then 90 to 180 it is increasing at this uh, 90 MeV. Similar is the character for other energies 300 MeV also you can see 42 MeV also you can see the same thing you do not have much data on the uh, lower theta side, but uh, whatever data is available is of that type correct. Okay. Now, uh, let us see what does this mean. In general theta dependence in general is that if you increase the theta the cross section decreases rather four scattering cross section you remember 1 by sin to the power 4 theta by 2 in general that happens. Now, in whatever interaction it is uh, from theta 0 to 90 you have seen that uh, the cross section increases uh, decreases. So, that means if you are sending the particles here you have many particles in this side uh, going close to theta many particles and if you are putting your detector here then you find that less number of particles are scattered in this direction that is uh, quite understandable. Then you put uh, the, your detector here and back scattering right particles coming here and you find that yes the back scattered uh, number is again very large this number is again very large right. Now, the kind of energies that we that is used here 90 MeV and uh, 100 MeV this large angle of scattering is surely not expected it is surely not expected most of the particles should go at a very small uh, deflections and as theta increases it has it, sh it has to go down and as theta further increases it should have gone further down. Now, the uh, remedy or to explain this or to understand this data that why it is having a backward peak forward peak as well as backward peak and nearly symmetric about the 90 degree direction a, an extremely nice good and uh, very rich explanation comes out 
that if you are let us call in let us talk in center of mass coordinate. Suppose you are sending a neutron from this side and you are sending a proton from this side and the interactions are going to give a small deflections only. So, this neutron will go this way and this proton will go this way small deflections small scattering angles. If you look for larger deviations the number is going to be small, but then if it so happens that during the interaction the proton becomes neutron and neutron becomes proton. Think of this situation when they are close to each other and that nuclear interaction is taking place during that time if it so happens that proton becomes neutron and neutron becomes proton then this small angle scattering itself will say that this neutron is coming this way right the neutron is coming this way this proton has become neutron and this neutron has become proton. So, if you had sent a neutron particle you find that a neutral part neutron is has come back. So, even though the scattering is not large the scattering is small right the, the, the scattering angle is small most of the particles are still going only slightly deviated from their original path. This proton is coming this way and the proton is only slightly deviated. But then uh, what you find in your detector you are detecting a neutron because this proton had converted itself into a neutron okay. and uh, this neutron had become a proton. So, this backward peak uh, the increased uh, cross section at theta close to 180 degrees indicates or can be understood if I take this as the mechanism of this interaction that during the interaction this proton is becoming neutron and this neutron is becoming proton. Then if there is there is a peak around theta equal to 0 in your detector you will also have a peak around theta equal to 180 degrees. Okay. We will talk little bit uh, more on this this is called exchange model of nuclear interaction. The proton and neutron are exerting nuclear forces on each other because they are exchanging some particles which are uh, creating this nuclear force and in this particular case uh, you the exchange is such that a proton and neutron interchange their character proton becoming neutron and neutron becoming proton. proton. So, we will talk little bit more about this model next next lecture and then we will go for next chapter of nuclear shell model right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.